Hey everyone, welcome back to another video for ICM the Python version. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Collide 2D library that was written especially for this course and how to utilize it. So let's go ahead and dive in. I have some starter code that'll be linked in the description. That is what I am working off of today. You can go find it, meet me back here. If you're planning on coding along, make sure you set up your screen so that you can see what I am doing and what you are typing. And let's get into it. Remember, you can pause and rewind at any point. So you'll notice in this code, I have a bunch of shapes, and then I have instructions to make things happen or change with those shapes when my mouse hovers over them. Now, previously, we saw and wrote together a function that would detect if my mouse was on a rectangle. So for at least two of these shapes, I could have used that function that we wrote before. But I mentioned in that video that A, that's probably a function I want to use a lot, and B, that isn't going to work for every shape. So if I wanted this to be able to work for my entire page, I would need to figure out the math and write different functions for every single one. Luckily for you all, I have already done that for you. So we created something called the Collide 2D library based off of the one for P5, but now for processing in Python. This is based on a really great collision detection document made by Jeffrey Thompson. It is here if you would like to review. And we tried to keep it as close to the P5 version made by Ben Morin as possible. And you can view that here, just so that the documentation is pretty consistent. There is full documentation, which exists on GitHub. It lives here at this link in the comments, and I will include it in your code. But all it means being on GitHub is that you can take this library and paste it into any code project you want. You'll notice that this exists in another file, kind of like we saw in unit one. And I've already linked it by saying from Collide2D import everything. So we don't have to worry about any of that. Now, if we head to this GitHub link, Oh, we're going to see that it has the full documentation of everything we need to know, a full table of contents that we can reference, and it also has um, the actual Python code. So if you wanted to put this into a project, you could go here, you could copy all of it, you could use that. But we are just focusing on this readme for now. You'll see that it has a list of all of these different functions um, that we can utilize from the code uh, and put into our program. So if I look at what we are going to be doing together back in the code, did I navigate away from it? No, I didn't. Thanks, God. Um, if I look back at my main page, you'll see that the first thing I want to do is change the fill of this circle. And the second thing is to change the fill of this line. Now, heading back to the GitHub, I'm going to scroll and scroll and scroll. I see all these things involving circle. And if I want my circle to change with the mouse, what I want is collide point circle because your mouse represents a single XY point. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and it's going to jump me down to this section. It tells me that collide point circle is going to look like this. It's going to take in all this information and it is going to take an XY input from the mouse and the X and Y and diameter of the circle. It does not need to have the fourth value for an ellipse. It is only going to work on circles. And there's even a note that it will not work with elliptical or oval shapes as planned. Great. You'll see that there's an example of it in use. There's a conditional statement where it's changing the background color when we're on top of a circle. And we can use all of this to help us out. So I'm actually going to copy this code. I'm going to head back to my trinket. And right in this code along section, I'm just going to drop it as a note so that I know how to call the function its name and I know all the information the function needs. Now, this says I want to change the fill of the ellipse. So before I start coding, let's actually create a variable together. I'm going to make a variable called global. Uh, I'm going to call it C color for circle. And I'm going to give C color a starting value of, you guessed it, yellow as it always is. And then I'm going to make sure that in my draw function, I am also globally using C color. That's important. And then down here in my function, I am going to make sure I fill in C color, or sorry, in my draw function, I'm going to draw in C color for the fill of my ellipse. Now, if I stop and run this, I now have a yellow circle. I now have a variable that I can manipulate. Life is good. So let's head back to writing this conditional. So I want something to happen if my mouse is on the circle. And I know that this function is what, that's the thing that's going to tell me, am I on the circle or not? So I'm going to start by writing if, 
And then I'm going to start calling my function if collide point circle. And it says, if I check back in the documentation, that point X, point Y, that's the X and Y of my mouse. So that's going to be mouse X, mouse Y. I do want us to note, this might not always be a mouse. There could be a world where you have like flying dots moving around the page that are going to collide with things. And that's when this would change for mouse X, mouse Y. That's why it's not mouse X, mouse Y all the time. We're making it more general, more abstract. Now, the next three numbers it needs are the circ X, circ Y, and diameter. And we remember it does not need the fourth value because it is only working on circles and not ellipses. So I'm going to take these three numbers, the X, the Y, the diameter of my circle. I'm going to copy them and I'm just going to paste them in. I could certainly retype, but I don't want to look back up and down. And that seems like extra work. So why not copy and paste? Now that I have this, I want to change my circle color background to obviously magenta because those are the only two colors I ever use. And I also want to print a statement that says on circle just so we know. I also am going to want an else with this that if I am not on top of that shape, then I want to change back to yellow. And I'm not going to print a statement for not being on the shape only because we're going to be doing this for everything on the page. Um, and I just want to keep it a little consistent. So I'm going to hit stop. I'm going to hit run. I'm going to move my mouse around the page. Nothing is happening. And once I am over the circle, you'll see that it turns magenta and it immediately floods my console with that on circle message. It works perfectly. And guys, this function, this is real code. We could go find it in our code. It has been written out for you by me. We didn't have to write it. We were able to just call on it and utilize the values that it's giving to the program to make this work and to make it work quickly, which is the beauty of the collision library. Um, I want to show one more example with kind of a weird funky shape, and then I'll turn this over to you guys to work on on your own. So we'll see what the second part wants us to change the stroke weight of the line if the mouse is touching it, and then change it back to normal if it's not. So again, I'm going to follow this step of first making a global variable. I'm going to call this one L weight, just so that I know. I'm going to say that L, oops, L weight is going to start at one. And then I'm going to make sure that L weight is also being called globally in my draw function. I'm going to head back down into my code. And now I'm going to get a little stuck because I know that collide point circle is a function. I don't actually know the name of the function for this one. So I'm going to head back to my documentation. I'm going to zoom back up to the top and I'm going to scroll through my table of contents until I see collide line point, which collide line point is what I want here. Now, if I read this over, I first of all see that it has this documentation for me, which again, I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste it into my program so I know. And it tells me this time, the first four numbers are the values of the line. So I need all four from my line, the X1, the Y1, the X2, the Y2. And then I need the X and Y coordinate of the point. And remember in this instance, the point is my mouse, but in other instances, the point might be something for a dot that's stationary or moving on the page, who knows. Um, and you also see it, there's this thing in square brackets at the end that says buffer. If I read through it, it tells me that's an optional value that has a default of 0 0.1. So I actually don't need to enter a value there. Um, you can increase and make the collision detection less sensitive with the caveat that it will also be less accurate about touching the line. So we know lines are pretty thin. This buffer at the end just decides how close your mouse has to be to the line before it triggers something. So if we have like a really small thin line that we want to be right on top of, um, we probably want a very low number here, like the 0 0.1. If it's something where it's not as important that we're immediately on top of it, we might increase that number a little bit. So we'll try it both ways just so we can see the example. I'm going to head over to Trinket and I'm going to paste this in as a comment so I have it as a reference. And then I'm gonna start writing my condition. So I'm gonna write collide line point. And just like before, I'm gonna head up to my line and I'm just gonna steal all four of these numbers to paste in because I don't really wanna go back and forth. I don't wanna risk it. So that takes care of my X1, Y1, X2, Y2. Now I need mouse X and mouse Y. And for now, we're gonna leave that buffer number off because it's optional. We'll see what it looks like not optional in a minute. So we said that when the mouse is on the line, the line should get thicker. 
So I'm going to say that L weight should increase to five. And again, you're welcome to play with numbers here. And I'm going to have an else statement that my L weight turns back to one. I'm also going to put in a print that I'm on the line just to make sure we know it's firing. Now I'm going to hit stop and play. My circle still works. My line, you'll see I'm a little bit away from it. I have to be exactly on top of, but then it tells me on line, but I'm noticing this line isn't changing. It's not getting thicker, even though it's saying on line. And I already realized why. If you realize too, it's because even though I did all this great variable stuff, I didn't actually use the variable in my line. So if you ever do something and it doesn't work, but you're getting like a statement in the console, check to make sure you used your variable. So I'm going to get rid of the one here and fill it in with L weight. Now the L weight variable will control things. Um, so now I'm getting on top of my line, it gets thicker, it gets thinner. And notice this again, doesn't happen. Right now my mouse is, it might be hard to see, it's very, very close to the line. It's like the very tip of the mouse is almost touching it, but I need to be fully over it for it to work. If I go back down into my function and I give it that optional parameter of let's say 0 0.7, now when I'm, oops, that was for my circle. I wasn't reading. I'm sure you guys watching this at home were like, what is this woman doing? Um, I'm going to add it to my collide line function because that's what takes it. I'm going to put it in as 0.7. Uh, now when I run this, you'll notice it turns thicker faster. So it's not by much, but I don't actually have to be like exactly on top of the line. I can still be a little bit of a distance away from it for it to change. And that's all that last number does. So again, you're welcome to change it to anything between zero and one. You're also welcome to just leave it as the default. Um, you can play around and see what works best for you. So that is our two examples. We still have three shapes left. We have a rectangle, we have a square, we have a triangle. And your challenge is going to be to utilize all of this documentation to try and use these functions and make reactions happen. Once you're done, you're going to head back here because we are actually going to use this code for the next lesson. So make sure you save it. You'll make a copy. You'll meet me back here. I will see you then. Enjoy your hover reactions.